Welcome back and good evening. This is ANN7, a prime with me, Cindy Mabia. Top story this half hour. The SACP has set the tone for its 14th National Congress. The Communist Party has kept its options open on walking away from the ANC-led alliance while hitting out to the governing party. The SACP is not walking away from the ANC-led alliance just yet, despite relations hitting an all-time low but it is exploring options to make its presence felt within the tripartite alliance. It's absolutely important to form the broadest patriotic front in South Africa, okay, around the defense of the constitution and our democracy, because that's being threatened. Um, and that will include alliances with safe South Africa forces, with business leadership South Africa, who came to our in Bezo as the Communist Party, the faith-based organizations, many of whom are not pro-ANC and certainly are not pro, <laughs> are not communists, okay, not, not in their remotest dreams. But they recognize the role that the Communist Party has been playing in the defense of the democracy and of our constitution. In a move to have its voice heard and maintain relevance within the alliance, the Communist Party is not shying away from addressing burning political issues like allegations of state capture. State capture will be discussed uh, extensively at this Congress and uh, new measures will be identified how to strengthen the party struggle to bring an end to the problem of uh, corporate state capture. There are these rolling emails, we don't know who will be left standing once all these emails are finished. Honestly, I, I, I think that sometimes I think about that. I wonder who will be left standing. There's the ANC conference in December. We don't know whether the ANC will manage to unite itself or will smash itself. And in what could be seen as opportunistic by some, the SACP is not ruling out the possibility of cashing in on the ANC's misfortunes to gain an upper hand in the political battle for survival. I am not saying that the SACP must contest state power, but I am saying it must swell ranks and close gaps if ever a, 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 a gaps emanate. The SACP is faced with the challenge of staying relevant when most are questioning the role of the organization in a modern-day South Africa. It now remains to be seen if the party is brave enough to go it alone. Bureau Report, ANN7. We welcome back Mr. Ziane, South African Liberty Foundation chairperson, and Udof Huza is a political analyst and columnist. We'll have Silo Peterson, ANC Youth League Free State spokesperson via Skype. Good evening to you at home if you've just joined us. Gentlemen, good evening and good to have you. I mean, what, what kind of posture did you pick up in terms of the SACP leadership on their intention to either forego the alliance with the ANC or is it pretty much still playing safe? Well, this is pre-conference and pre-election South Africa, and all is fair in love and war, they say. Uh, the SACP, SACP's platform is just another platform. Like Ahmed Kathrada's funeral services, there were many of those. And, and he, was, he was hailed and hailed, and at the same time, the attacks on the ANC, the Afro-pessimistic attacks on the ANC, and its face of the ANC, President Zuma, are actually quite common today. It's like having to eat and having to go to the bathroom and the, these things are all the same in my view. The Envavi's media text on the ANC is another example of those many things that are happening at the moment in pre-conference and pre-election South Africa. One should actually remember also the elections of Swapo Party in October 1989 in Namibia. Namibia was always the political and socio-economic territory and testing ground for apartheid South Africa and its backers, backers being the international West. Now, the Namibian pre-elections were very interesting in that way that you had 149 different little parties. Every single vote taken away from Swapo not to achieve the 66.6% .6 majority was worth a million rand then, under Duke Much and P.W. Buerta. So they received the money. The DTA, the Democratic Tunnel Alliance, which is Namibia's DA Democratic Alliance, it was, it was very evident. In fact, they received 120 million rand then, back in 1989, to compete against the Swabo Party and still did not make it. Are you saying the SACP is part of the, the regime change uh, in, in, in wanting to dethrone the ANC, as it were? It seems like it, because one should not forget it was also SACP's Joe Slovo, together with Apartheid de Klerk, who formulated and pushed through, the, through CODESA the secret sunset clauses. 
And those secret sunset clauses did what? It was divide and rule, grand apartheid scheme. What did they divide and what did they rule? What, what happened was in that case, the, the, um, the secret sunset clauses were brought to Codesa to, to serve a purpose of, of protecting the minority groups' rights. So that means that, that if you were a white settler or an Indian imported worker for the white settlers, or if whatever, you were protected, you had minority rights against the majority. Yeah, but the majority was so, exposed so, to structured so, poverty. Yeah, so, sorry, Udo, but, but one would argue that we needed to have that reconciliatory process to usher in at the dawn of but democracy. But why secret sunset clauses? How, how long is the sunset? When does, when does the sun rise? Mm. No, but I know that 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 in itself has not been repealed. But you know we've we've gone over that phase. That's why now the second transition of economic transformation is important. But I just want to come back to why the SACP, as an alliance partner in recent years, has seen has been more vociferous and much more critical of their partners publicly, as opposed to to working within the structures of of the ANC. It's it's a struggle of of survival within the ANC. One can put it very clear. See, you'll be surprised that ANC, like the SACP members, in all intents and purposes, in various provinces, and particularly also at national level, while they fight for it, positions, and not only positions that are empty, but positions of power, either be an MEC, either be a minister, either be something else. If they are not going to be part of those, if they're not going to be appointed as ministers, if they're not going to be appointed as MECs, then they'll have a voice of disgruntlement. That is all. Now, the Communist Party is supposed to be the vanguard of the ANC, the protector of the ANC. Surprisingly, this new SACP that has come into the fore, it is the one that is eating the ANC away. But eating it from one point of view, I think I would agree with, with my learned friend here that says that it is because of there is a buttering that is happening here. We can't ignore it. That the SACP that is supposed to be protecting the ANC is the one that's eating the ANC. When you, when you stand up and say that the, the ANC of today has collapsed, it has lost its moral duties, it is, it is in tatters, what do you mean? You, the protector of that ANC, you are the one who's in tatters. You are the one who's supposed to be protecting, to be the vanguard of the ANC. But you stand up and say, no, no, this ANC is because you are wanting to become a leader in it. If your share is not given to you, you will show a different color. The SACP is a communist party. What it is supposed to be, it can be a capitalist in its own nature. But yes, we see a different SACP here. Yeah, but, but what does this mean, though, in, in the, the year of OR and uh, showing unity in action, which is something that the SACP has also endorsed, but in practice we see more press conferences and public spats uh, and uh, uh, periphery uh, showdowns, if you will, uh, of the criticism of the ANC leadership. We saw with Solima Baile, we've seen with uh, uh, Minister Blade and Zamande, all of them taking jabs and turns at criticizing uh, President Jacob Zuma openly and yet endorsing Cyril Ramaphosa. So you're saying it's plain politicking here. It's nothing really untoward. Nothing untoward possibly, but it's also at the same time primitive politicking. The many, many of the SACP members are actually also members of the ANC. And I don't think that they will shoot themselves into their own feet. Those who are not ANC members, they can make noise, but then they will be few and far between. Once the, ANC, the, once the SACP does indeed break away, it will show how weak it is. It will show its weakness, because the ANC members will retain its, their ANC membership. So therefore, the SACP might even come out as totally broken up, falling apart after that skirmish. Mm. But if their lifeline or their, their very existence depends on the alliance with the ANC, I don't see what value all of these sideshows are, are doing in, in solidifying the alliance uh, and dealing with, with issues on a national level, that of unemployment, the, the, the triple challenges that we're facing. Uh, but Masiri. You, 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 you ought to be hearing the echoes more than ever before from SACP saying that 
We want radical economic transformation, guiding the whole society in terms of how South Africa ought to be moving away from the sunset laws in order to have all South Africa now arriving at the sunrise. That's what we needed. We need an SACP that's going to be vocal about the changing of the lives. What do you hear today? You hear SACP only concentrating on a specific area that will as far as we're concerned that it should divide the ANC to the core. That's all that they're interested in. Now, it says that the SACP is interested in positions of power. It only wants pol political power. It only wants a certain ministerial positions, MEC positions, and so forth. They're not interested in building the organization. If the organization is in trouble, you're the vanguard, you're the guardian, you're the greatest thinker of that organization, ought to be speaking in line and ought to be directing our people in that forefront, being a member of the ANC also, and saying that this is the way in which you ought to be pursuing the radical economic transformation, that we need to move from a 23 years of hunger, that our people ought to rise from the poverty that are permanent in. No, we don't hear that. But mm. what you hear is spits and 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 accusations within uh, specifically from the SACP against their own mother body that you against their own you know mother party a partner in that in that sense why are they not playing that role it's it's simple one can just conclude that these are people who are interested in power will they stand it alone no they won't mm. No, no, they were very quick to make that clear that it's something that they wouldn't take very lightly, obviously uh, having to consult or even if that's on the table, we're not sure. But they, they position themselves as the altruistic protectors of the Constitution, even citing certain uh, um, civil organizations and churches that have joined forces with the SACP to say that we are purely there to protect the Constitution uh, and uh, seemingly the ANC hasn't done that. The communists, first of all, have never been Christians. Christianity was no part of, of communism and vice versa. Secondly, the history of the SACP was, usually, was initially a white history, a white colonial history to protect themselves as, as mine workers in, in, in the olden days. So all of a sudden it's now become an integrated, fully integrated black and white political party and movement. It's, 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 it's actually quite nonsensical. The SACP has a lot of contradictions within itself and they should solve it themselves. Otherwise they become the laughing stock of the nation. Yeah, but let, let's go back to just the way, uh, I think it was Jeremy Cronin who was talking about that, that, uh, you know, the concern is that there's the success of looting, everything that you read in, in the press and that they uh, are essentially the, uh, the only hope, if you will, in dealing with this uh, uh, perceived this song uh, sounds like so familiar from many other parties. The DA sings the same song, the EFF sings the same song, the COPE sings that same song. So he who pays the piper calls the tune. So if, if they have the same song book, the same tune, the same song and everything, and they say all sing the same song, we eventually start to believe that's what they are singing. Mm. So the church is a, is a broad church, which doesn't seem to be gelling too much on that op opposing side, such as the SACP, EFF, DA, UDM and, and COPE. Yeah. But they've made their stance very clear. I mean, the one side blade saying that they don't back factions within the ANC, and yet we know that President Jacob Zuma is unwelcome and is banned at the SACP events. Uh, that's double speak again, a contradiction in terms, Musir. How do you say you don't back faction when you have chosen a specific leader above the other? You're, slowly, you're surely showing that you've, cho you've chosen a side. A, an organization like the SACP ought to have been neutral from day one not to participate much into who's supposed to be leading this ANC, but rather in guiding into the principles that you, these are the principles through the eye of the needle, you mention all of them, and say these are the kind of leaders that we want the, 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 the South Africa to be led, that the ANC should be led by. These are the people that we want. The vanguard, the, the greatest thinker of them all, out of who have come from the SACP, playing that role, no, it deviates. It, you say people are factional, and yet you make a factional statement, on the other hand, you point out and say these ones are factional, and you are not factional. So in, in, in intense, you're creating even more divisions. You are a, a party and alliance to an organization. Why do you come up with a preferred choice? Mm. Why not argue it? Why not have a debate within an organization? Why come and make debates in public? What are you doing? Are you building an organization or are you destroying it? What, what should the, I suppose, the intervention be with the ANC going forward in 
how the terms of engagement will be and the expectation of the SACP, their tendency to want to be consulted on policies extensively uh, and making decisions and influencing ministers or whatever appointments are going to be. What kind of intervention should the ANC be looking at going forward? From the SACP? Mm. None at all. Why would, why would they go and look for, for intervention no, from no, the I'm SACP? Saying what, what does the ANC have to do to create a more productive, I guess, uh, 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 environment within the alliance, because clearly they're at loggerheads. Just shut up and, and do their work. Very simple. Should they see let them go? Or is, is, is that yes, not an option? Yes, let them go. I think that, that it would be a clear watershed. Let them go, because then you know how weak the SACP is and how strong the ANC really is. Yeah. What ramifications would that have, though, within the alliance? Well, you, you can't ignore the fact that there are certain members that are in there within the, 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 the ANC. And if, if one were to do a head count, you'd be surprised that the majority of them are not even supporting what their leaders are saying. Because this does not come even from the branches. This is this this ought to have a consultative process. You'll find that in there, there's not even a consultative process that is there. You you do not have an open space where, unlike the ANC, we would know what the members are saying. But you do not have already. You have a a narrative that was negative against the ANC without having had what the branches are telling SACP leaders to do. You have leaders that are out there who are standing in front who dictate terms about what the SACP stand for. But SACP, I'll, I'll be surprised that majority of these members will not be supporting this move. They will remain within the ANC. The few that would want to walk out will be so few. The majority of the SACP members will remain within the ANC. And, and it yeah, be, sorry, it, sorry, Udo, I mean, earlier, before I forget this point, in, in you saying that you, you can counter the arguments that were made in the, uh, the press today uh, with regards to what the SACP stands for and what they can do for this country. So you've got two SACPs, as, as my colleague on my left just said. One is the leadership, which is acting on its own, and the other is, is the membership, which is actually also membership of the ANC. So you already have two camps within the SACP. And leadership usually is much smaller than the, than the broad masses, the broad voting masses. So that means the broad voting masses will actually then turn to the old home, which is African National Congress and not South African Communist Party. Mm. So that in that context, the SACP stands to lose a hell of a lot mm. and it could collapse. Well, it, or even collapse the, the, the ANC. We heard from SG Greta Mandashi calling on that sense of unity, saying that an SC, or, you know, alliance partners that are weakened also impact on the, uh, the future or the strength of the ANC. So there is a, a co-dependence, uh, uh, if you no, like, or existence none. of... I don't of believe the, that. Don't forget, Mandashi was a member of the... or is a member of the SACP too, so he sings that song along with, with, with um, the head of Bladen Simande. Mm. No, but I'm, I'm saying that I don't think it's, a, it's an automatic or natural choice to make, to dismantle the alliance, as it were, because historically uh, there, there is such um, entrenched, not only obligations, but also a, a history of where the, the alliance comes from. So either or uh, will impact the, the alliance uh, negatively or positively, depending if they, they have a common vision. This, this reminds me of, of, of the Polokan conference where you had members of the ANC after they lost the leadership. They, they kept on saying, we're going to serve divorce papers, mm -hmm. going to serve divorce papers. Finally, they, they served the divorce papers and they, were, they formed themselves as COPE. They, they, they displayed themselves and make promises the next election. They, they won, they got it better. They were the, the biggest opposition after the DA. Later on, uh, only one, two one members, seat. if not one seat was left. <laughs> Same will happen here. But in this instance, you have members of SACP who do not and are supporting this, this, this stance that their leaders are taking. Now you wonder whom are they going to live out with? Yes, ANC needs to play that role of being unifier, of being a, a person that would, or organization that would want all, all those that are in alliance with to remain with it. But when, when relationships are going to be strained to the West, somebody has got to serve the divorce paper in this instance. Supposedly come the end of this year, a new leader, leadership that is elected that is not pro the SACP, that they've, they've prepared in this instance because it's a conditional uh, uh, arrangement that they have and say our marriage might continue provided there is Cyril Ramaphosa who is going to head us. Suppose he loses. 
What are they going to do then? Will they still remain within the organization that they feel they're not welcomed? Or will they remain in the organization that feel the leadership that is in there does not serve their interests? Is that what we're having here? Why would an organization in this regard like ACCP be of a preference of the leader? Does the ANC say that it prefer a leader in the SACP? You'll find that it doesn't do that. It allows each and every organization to appoint and elect its own leaders. Yeah, but where does that, what seems like a legitimate expectation come from to be consulted on any decision that the ANC is making? Well, the ANC has a lot of SACP members inside its, its own ranks. So therefore, the ANC members SA, come SACP or SACP come ANC are having a vote and having a say in, within the ANC. So it's nothing new. So why, why would, why, how would you increase that? Mm. Think you, you think maybe the compromise on the suggestion of a double or rather two deputies uh, may be dealing with those very uh, uh, nagging issues around uh, SACP and accommodating them as a key or material stakeholder? There's a lot of horse trading going on between now and, and, and November this year to find out who's going to, to who can push the furthest and who will be the first and the second vice presidents or deputy presidents and who will be the president. So wouldn't, it wouldn't be surprised that was the, cut, the deal that's been cut, in other words, to enforce it by having people like the SAPC shouting the odds together with the DA and the EFF and the UDM and COPE and whoever they are. And this new movement of, of, of Cosatu, the split away from Cosatu, the Numsas and all these people who will make noises. Mm. That is the pressure. Yeah. There's, so, a, there's a, pressure to, a pressure group, actually. That's all there is. Yeah, but, but I mean, it is a, a delicate balance, as, as you were saying, that uh, the, the ramification or rather the impact thereof could be that uh, uh, ANC members or SCP members uh, who feel disgruntled could either form a splinter, and, and that's not what the, the party yeah. it needs at the moment. The splitter will be so small, it'll be like, it'll be less than cope. So it, it's, it's, I think the political senior, le senior leadership is mature enough to have done its homework. They know what they're playing, what card game they're being playing. Mm. They, know, they would understand it very well. They know how to react and respond. I observed that if you look at the body language of President Zuma, now from last week, you could see a much more confident, authoritative, statesman-like person who knows that he was in charge or that he is in charge. So therefore, if you, if you, lis if you listen to the, S the, the uh, ANC Youth League, the ANC Women's League, and the supporters, the, 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 the war veterans, you, you find very clearly there's a lot of confidence nowadays. Mm. And I don't think that they mislead themselves. I believe that they do the homework thoroughly. Yeah, but I mean, there, there is, it doesn't seem at least at the moment that there's any talk of, of uh, severing uh, ties with the ANC. Uh, in terms of, you know, even contesting the 2019 general elections. But what we see is a level of electioneering, if you like, in, in, in terms of the, the state capture, which is what's in the public domain or there has become public lexicon. Uh, for, for the AN, uh, SACP to be carrying that, it doesn't really give you a definition of what their mandate would be, if you like. No, I, th I think it's, it's, I think that's what... Uh, Prof. One indicated earlier on and said that because of election that is due in December, you have an, a people who have done the, what you call, uh, the, the branding of a, a negative narrative against the president and whoever he might be supporting in this, in, in, in this instance, whether you call the NDZ and the CR-17. And you say that the CR-17 is against this one, the, 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 the Zubta Gupta Logi in that instance. And, and, and we stand in this regard and say we are protecting the constitution because these ones have, have found a way of bringing the Guptas into the Zumanology. So therefore we are not part and parcel of them, but we support Cyril. So Cyril is, is against this and therefore support Cyril who is against this other group. That is, that is the, the, the terminology that is running around with them at this instance. That says is the battle line that within the battle of the ANC leadership. They are not, as one can say, it's, it's, it's a forceful group that is within the ANC that is pushing for a specific narrative, but not only that, but also pushing for a specific leadership. They have already indicated whom they are supporting, and in this instance, paint this one black and say that he is going to be, I remember the, the ones that cope when they were formed, they say people are going to undermine the constitution. People are going to amend the constitution. People are going to break the constitution. That was the song that was sang by, by cope even then. Same songs are sang today.
Okay, so it sounds more like a different script, but uh, pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty well, much the same. Say, they say in the, in the German language that the, the pigs have changed the trough, but the trough remains the same and the feeding master remains the same too. So mm. I think that's the case here in, this ca in the case of the SACP and, and, and all the other political group links and, and groupies. Yeah, well, well, it's day one. I mean, it's something that, uh, of course, we'll be following very closely, uh, the developments that are coming from the 14th uh, SACP conference taking place in Birchwood, Ekuruleni. But to our guests, thanks as always for joining us. That's Musiri Tsiane from the South African Liberty Foundation. He's their chairperson. Udo Huza is a political analyst and columnist. And to you at home, thanks indeed for being our esteemed panelist or third uh, panelist on this debate. We take a quick ad break. We'll see you shortly.